Hey folks, are you ready to dive into one of the most iconic jets ever built? This one isn't just metal and fire, it's a story with wings. From the skies of the Middle East to Iran's own hangars, today we're talking about the MiG-29, Russia's agile beast. In this video, we'll go through everything from its birth to its battles, how it came to Iran, what makes it special, and what holds it back, why pilots still respect it, and why enemies still fear it, and whether it can really stand up to America's F-Series fighters. We've all heard of the flashy Western jets like the F-15 and F-16, but the Russians always had a trick hidden up their sleeve. The MiG-29 was that move, a fast and fierce reply to the West. It wasn't made for show, it was made for the dogfight. Born in the Cold War's fiery competition for air dominance, America rolled out the F-16 and Russia answered immediately. What they built was quick, aggressive, and beautifully unpredictable. They called it a fighter, but really it was a living creature. When Iran entered the story, everything changed dramatically. After years of sanctions, it desperately needed a new backbone. The Tomcats were aging, the Phantoms were tired and slow. So Moscow opened its door and Tehran walked right in. The MiGs arrived quietly, without any red carpet or speeches, just mechanics, stress, and a thousand political question marks. The army hesitated, the guard insisted, and the deals were done. Soon, Russian wings were flying under an Iranian sky. At first, it wasn't smooth. Pilots struggled with the systems. Russian designs were different, their logic brutally practical. Every switch and gauge demanded a whole new mindset. But fear slowly turned into mastery and finally pride. When a MiG-29 takes off, the ground literally shakes. Its twin Klimov RD-33 engines roar like two wild hearts. The acceleration leaves even Tomcats blinking behind it. It's pure energy, defiance, and adrenaline in motion. Back then, Iran was under crushing embargoes and isolation. Spare parts were myths and repairs like solving puzzles. But the engineers didn't quit. They reverse engineered everything. The MiG became a classroom for Iran's new aerospace mines. In major drills like Velayat and Zolfagar, it stole the show. Pilots said it felt alive, responsive, and almost telepathic. It didn't just fly, it danced across the sky with purpose. A raw connection between man and machine few could describe. It could spin, roll, climb, and drop faster than most could react. Spectators called it poetry in motion, deadly yet graceful. But that same extreme agility came at a price, lifespan. Fast planes burn bright, but they burn out quicker too. The MiG-29 is smaller than the F-14, but far more agile. Its instant thrust feels like being launched from a volcano. It easily handles up to nine Gs of brutal pressure, a masterpiece of speed, precision, and human tolerance. The aluminum frame keeps it light, but incredibly strong. 40-degree wings slice through air like surgical blades. Even the air intakes were engineered with obsession and care. It's like Russian craftsmanship meeting pure battlefield necessity. Still, no machine is perfect, and this one isn't either. Its cockpit feels older, its radar isn't cutting edge anymore. Everything relies on the pilot's eyes and split-second instinct. One wrong move, and the sky becomes a dangerous gamble. Yet in close combat, the MiG is an absolute monster. With R-73 missiles, it can strike from impossible angles. If an F-16 comes too close, it's already too late. In a knife fight in the clouds, the MiG-29 reigns supreme. Iran reportedly has around 30 of these birds in service. Not all can fly because parts are scarce and aging fast. But through upgrades and local engineering, some breathe again old warriors reborn under the desert sun of Iran. Russia has whispered offers of technical aid and spare kits, maybe even newer MiGs or components for modernization. 
It's not official, but insiders say the talks are active. Both nations share new enemies and mutual strategic needs. In recent skirmishes with Israel, the MiGs took to the skies. Their mission was to intercept, defend, and protect key zones. But Israel's F-35s had the stealth and sensors advantage. Several MiGs had to retreat before radar-guided strikes landed. But still, their presence mattered. It sent a powerful signal that Iran's skies are guarded, that its air force still breathes. Even aging wings can hold a nation's pride aloft. A message louder than any missile. We're still here. Some call the MiG outdated, a relic of Cold War glory. But the pilots who fly them tell a very different story. They say no modern jet feels as raw or alive in combat. It's not just the machine, it's the bond you build with it. For Iran, the MiG wasn't just a plane, it was a teacher. Its circuits and engines taught engineers how to innovate. Every bolt unscrewed, every test flight revealed new knowledge. From its bones, new Iranian designs slowly took shape. Today you'll still see them in Tehran and Tabriz bases. Each flight is a reminder of endurance, not nostalgia. When those twin engines roar, it's not just sound, it's spirit. A mix of Russian metal and Iranian persistence in motion. Comparing it to the F-16 never gets old for analysts. The F-16 is refined, western, efficient, but predictable. The MiG is wild, temperamental, but fearless to the core. It's a clash of philosophies, discipline versus instinct. So, what's next for Iran's air future? That's the real question. Should it keep upgrading the MiGs or leap towards Su-35s? While new technology arrives, experience is still priceless. The MiG-29 taught Iran how to stand alone in the sky, 